everyone, or Da Jia Hao for the Mandarin speakers out there. My name is Austin Bam, and I am a global talent acquisition partner at Tencent. So, what is a global talent acquisition partner? It's just a fancy term for global recruiter. Before I start this video, I'd like to invite everyone to smash and like that subscribe button, as well as give me a thumbs up, follow me on LinkedIn, and all that fancy stuff you do before the start of a video. So what do I do as a global recruiter? Well, I do what's called full cycle recruiting, and that is starting with sourcing, going all the way to screening calls, setting up interviews with hiring managers, and helping candidates through our process to eventually get to an offer. After the offer is issued, I also handle the onboarding for our studio based here in Irvine, California called Lightspeed LA. With being a Mandarin and Chinese speaker, I also assist with some translation documents, whether it be for marketing or internal use. I also work on the recruitment marketing for our studio here in Irvine, posting things on LinkedIn and other sites, as well as handling and helping recruiting with other studios that are based in North America under the Tencent umbrella. I chose a career at talent acquisition in Tencent mainly due to three reasons, human resources, China, and gaming. So for human resources, I did my undergraduate in human resource management at Indiana University. And while I was there, I was studying and learning more about not just companies' bottom lines, but really who are the people that drive these bottom lines. And it's the people, it's the talent that you attract, and that's what really got me excited about human resources. With recruiting especially, while I was in the Chinese flagship program at Indiana University, I was abroad in Nanjing and got an internship at a video game art, art outsourcing company. And there I was an international recruiter and really just recruiting their Chinese employees and being able to test their English capabilities as well as their foreign talent that would you know, be able to test their Chinese abilities. And that's what got me into my China journey as well. When I was in my freshman going into sophomore year, I had an internship in Wuhan, China, teaching English. And uh, that, that journey changed my, my life and how I, I wanted to pursue careers in the future. I immediately joined the Chinese program at IU through the School of Global International Studies and then joined the Chinese flagship program after I learned more about what they did. And in terms of sending students spending summers over to mainland China or Taiwan to improve their Chinese language abilities. And then with their flagship capstone year of sending students to spots in mainland China to where they would be able to do their studies as well as do an internship at a company in China, could be global, could be local, to interact and use your second language ability in a professional setting. And what really got me into Tencent and gaming is I am a huge gamer and you could look at my Steam list and think, how does this person have time for anything else? And it's one of those things that it, it wasn't a space that I thought I'd, that I'd be able to, number one, get into. And number two, I really didn't know how to get into it. And it just this opportunity I got through con meeting connections while I was over in China, they, that whole big thing of guanxi is what they call it. But it's you know making connections and networking and the value of that in your professional and personal relationships is really a big part of what got me here. So when I was choosing my career and that those were like really the three big things was HR, China and gaming all really intersected. And just also the part that as a recruiter, I get to talk to people all the time. And that's something that I really like to do as well as be able to make a huge impact on someone's lives of being able to give them an awesome opportunity, whether it be a industry vet that's been in gaming for 20 years, giving them something new and going to a brand new fresh studio in North America under Tencent, or even to fresh grads or people that aren't in the gaming industry, really getting to meet with them and potentially give them this life-changing opportunity to really join the gaming industry and get to work on a lot of things that they love. So that's how I got into this particular space. Yes, absolutely, my career has a global international component. With our processes that we go through in talent acquisition, we have to communicate with HQ over in Shenzhen. And while there are people over there that do speak English, it is very cool and it does it's a unique experience to be able to speak in their native language rather than having them speak in mine. And it does make a lot of the processes go by easier. And being able to understand local business culture as well as some of the norms over there 
even in in work and outside of work just helps navigate this huge space uh, between U.S. and Chinese business cultures and U.S. and Chinese relationships. We also have a lot of employees here in the United States that are from China and being able to speak with them in their native language and being able to build this bridge between U.S. and Chinese culture is an amazing tool to have, an amazing experience for anyone who wants to get into this space. So highly recommend, five out of five stars. So the foreign language that I use is Mandarin Chinese. That's the only other one that I know. And we use it a lot when communicating with HQ as well as other offices in the United States where they also have Chinese admins. And really the skills that, you know, outside of languages, I like to think of it of when you're learning a foreign language or you're learning a foreign culture, you have like an iceberg, right? And so the part that is very obvious, the, t the top of the iceberg outside of the water you could see is, yes, the language is obviously different. So you start with there and then you start descending in the iceberg and you start learning about all these things that you miss on the surface that you wouldn't necessarily be able to grasp unless if you went in with the language. So I bought up Guanxi earlier with being a critical component. There's also Mianzi, which is this face. And we do have this in the United States, but it's there's several different components of face that are all kind of split up in the US versus China. It kind of falls under this one umbrella. There's also some things as far as we have high context and low context information where high context info is, you know, a way that we communicate in China where it's not as much specific details are given about a certain assignment or certain things and it leaves a lot of guesswork versus low context, you know, that we say in the states would be you're saying things, you're giving a full explanation, you're you're saying things much more clearly with a lot more detail. And so you're navigating these two spaces and you have to think about the information you're getting, asking a lot of questions. Is this all the information that I need? There's also this concept of feedback where this goes a lot back into face where from my Western counterparts, it's pretty easy to get feedback, um, almost a little too easy. And with my Chinese counterparts uh, asking for feedback, they, they don't want to offend and but it's this whole thing, you know, hey, this is for my improvement. I do want to know what I did wrong or what I did particularly well. So that's a really big one. And this isn't just for Mandarin. This is for any language or international component that you go through. There's going to be this journey that you start with the language as the core. And then you're going to move deeper into the iceberg with all the different things, with social cues, things that come up through history. And some of it might be more similar to the United States and with English you might be able to to lean on that a little bit more with Mandarin it is the very first rule of learning Mandarin and learning about China is to forget everything that you know about the US and English I think I could split this up into what skills I developed and which skills that I wish I developed more in my studies so when I was an undergrad, I started my China journey and really learned Mandarin Chinese for about four years, as well as developing my knowledge in the human resource space. With the human resources undergrad, you learned a lot of generalist stuff. We had recruiting, we learned about compensation, we learned about law, and it gave me a lot of like a 30,000 foot view of the HR space and then going in and specializing later in recruiting. For Chinese language as well, I did my master's degree at Johns Hopkins University and I did it in China. And doing international economics really made me think of human resources, especially recruiting in another way, thinking about labor markets, thinking about how labor markets are affected by the overall economy, all these different macro and micro poles that are going on in different directions and thinking how, well, if all these, comp these companies are going up or this new industry, the, the metaverse and all these things, the, they're demanding programmers, it's gonna be harder to get programmers. So thinking about those things, it really helped. The other huge thing was that my program was very unique. It required us to take 80% of our coursework in Mandarin, as well as doing a master's level thesis and the thesis defense in Mandarin, which the, doing it in English is already a daunting enough task. It really pushed me to my limit and really my comfort zone was across the street. It was it was a very 
fun and intense experience, but I'm really thankful for it. In terms of what I would have liked to develop more while I was in school was organizational skills and really being able to juggle a lot of things at once. Really, when you're a recruiter, you have several different people, several di different positions you're running. Um, in my case, I am running for different studios as well. And you have many, many applicants at different stages of the process. And you're having them meet with different people from hiring managers to technical interviews to coding tests and having to keep track of all of those and make sure that everyone gets the updated info that they need at the appropriate time, as well as keeping up to date with where people are is a it you fully utilize your your outlook calendar is what i'm saying and and don't be afraid to write things down write thing get lots of notes it really that it, it's very helpful and that's i really wish that i focused on that more as undergrad because it's something i had to learn on the job and that's that's a huge component of uh i think in recruiting that you need to do is keeping track and having everything organized So for anyone that's interested in global recruiting or talent acquisition, I, I like to think about this like an economist. You have what I like to call macro knowledge and micro knowledge. So macro knowledge is understanding the industry that you're going to be recruiting in. So I'm in the games industry, for example. I'm following things like GDC. Gamescom was last week in Germany and following what what kind of new startups are coming up? What kind of genres are they really focusing on? So how will that affect the talent market that we're going to have to go out and fight for these candidates? And so really understanding industry knowledge, and this could apply really for any job that whether you're going into accounting or finance or you're going into cybersecurity, knowing specifically what challenges your industry is facing will really help. And it is something you need to pick up. Now on the micro scale, that's more of your specific function. So in my case with recruiting, so keeping up to date with what are, what are the recruiting platforms other than LinkedIn? Is GitHub a good place to find, to find engineering talent? There's a uh, art space that there's different art places to use to find uh, art artist portfolios that they may not be looking on LinkedIn. And knowing more about your industry knowledge, what what are you know what are what are the things in cold calls or cold in mails that are really getting better responses when you're sourcing, or what are some better ways to enhance the candidate experience while they're in the pipeline? These are all things that you have to keep up with as well. And I think this could apply not only for recruiting but for other careers as well. Learning your your industry that you're in, as well as learning more about your specific function. And don't let these word, these terms macro and micro fool you. They not Macro is not important than micro. They, they're both important in their own way, but macro is much, more, is much more broad of a scope. And then micro is where you get really into the weeds with your specific function. Thank you everyone for listening to my TED Talk on global talent acquisition in the gaming industry. I appreciate everyone for listening. If you wanna learn more or just wanna connect and chat, Feel free to add me on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to connect with students and help them out in this industry. Thank you, everyone. Zaijian.